Thanks, everybody, for joining another episode of the Ketonian Corner. This is Jolene Hale, and normally I am here with my co-host, John Davidson, but he is out on vacation, so we have a special um, co-host today, uh, one of our other co-workers, Javier Martinez. Thank you, Javier, for joining me. Hello. Thank you for having me. So today, we... Um, well, last last uh, show, we actually talked about um, meal prep, and so John and I kind of went through a few of the different methods of doing meal prep and then uh, talked about which methods we each use. Uh, so we wanted to kind of expand on that today, and I was going to talk about uh, specifics of what I made for this week um, and how I went about doing that. And then um, kind of wanted to talk to Javier about some of the different pieces that he has experienced uh, with doing meal prep and um, being new to keto. So we'll talk through all of those things as well. Um, but for me, this week, um, I actually made some chili. And um, my chili after keto is not a whole lot different than pre-keto, to be quite honest. Um, didn't use beans before, so make my chili with steak, um, some ground beef, and then um, mostly water. Um, it's I do put a little bit of um, tomato sauce and tomato paste in for the flavor, but then the majority of flavor comes out of my spices. So made that for this week. Um, I also made a chicken, let's see, it was chicken thighs put in the crock pot and then made a cheese broccoli soup that I uh, incorporated with the chicken thighs. And then so it's a cheesy chicken broccoli soup? It is. It yeah. is. So the recipe that I had was just for cheese broccoli soup. Um, but I'm not a big, huge soup fan. Um, I, I like more of the thicker chowder type of soup to begin with. Um, but I just kind of feel like if there's nothing, if there's no substance in there, it's not really a meal. <laughs> so um, I do love the flavor of cheese soup, so that's why I tried to figure out how to make it to where I would enjoy it, so um, incorporated that, but um, after John and I had interviewed, and if you guys have not listened to the interview with Tracy, um, please go back and listen to that because it was very informative, but after we had a discussion with her, she made me start thinking about the fact that I eat the same food every day for the whole week. Um, and what that actually does to your body, which I never really thought about before. Um, so she pointed out that she went and had some uh, food um, allergy testing or resistance testing. Uh, and so with that, she found out that she was um, had a resistance to a lot of different things from nuts to dairy, um, beef, so one of the things she found out within the research is that if you eat the same foods regularly, your body builds up um, a resistance to it. So got me really thinking. Um, I was going to start making that change this week, but we had some things going on over the weekend and I just did not, um, did not make that happen. So my goal for next week is that I make different foods for each day of the week. So we're going to see how that works out for me. Um, are you going to try and meal prep it somehow? What I think I'm going to do is actually make more food, but then freeze it and then rotate it yeah. every... What she told us was that if you rotate a food every four days, it would keep you from building that resistance to it. So that's what I'm going to attempt. Um, I'll do a lot more cooking this week. I probably am going to have to do two to three weeks worth of cooking in one day. Um, so that I can freeze it and rotate the, the meals out, but we're going to see how this works out. Wish me luck. Um, can I ask a quick question? Absolutely. What do you mean by resistance? That's a new kind of term yeah, so used in this scenario. The way she explained it, um, and she is going to do a much better job than, than me doing uh, the explanation of this, but the way she explained it is if you eat the same food continuously, um, your body builds and I'm going to call it a resistance, but it builds a resistance to it. So you start having reactions to it. 
So like with dairy, um, you could, it could become an inflammatory to you if you have built that resistance to it. Um, so what she found is that through the test, I think there's three different uh, categories. You can be mild, moderate, and high resistance to the food. So I can't remember what the mild time frame is to stay away from the food, but I'm pretty positive that with the moderate, they suggested to stay away from the food for six months and then you can start incorporating it again, but then rotate it through yeah. and you shouldn't have that same issue. Um, so that's what she is doing. Um, and again, she had, she had a large, uh, a large list of things that she was, a, had built a resistance to. So she's working through that, but I would not be shocked if I have that <laughs> because as I've mentioned in these before, I tend to eat the same foods constantly if I love it. So, um, so we're going to attempt this and I actually think I'm going to go have the testing done. Uh, that she did. So that was going to ask that. What? Who's doing the testing? Yeah. So she does have a website, and I will put that in uh, the show notes. Um, but if you go to Tracy's website, uh, you can actually go through her. To she has um, some agreement with some labs that they will do it a little bit cheaper than if you just went to your regular doctor and had these done, which you could. Um, I don't know if insurance pays for these specific testing. Um, but I will it's, link her website uh, to our show notes so that you guys can go look at that. Um, I, I've, I've had that done here in Peoria. I've had allergy testing. Yeah, and I, I don't but, know if it's the same. Well, yeah, um, that's, that's why I was asking. Yeah, I, there's a questionnaire. I did look at her site, and there was a questionnaire that she had that based on answers kind of told you um, whether you should do this, this testing or not. Um, and so, again, I'm not positive if the actual blood work that they do or what test they do, because she did mention that there were some um, <clears throat> tests that, tests. yeah, a little more invasive. Thank you. Know, you. I guess I'm curious about it because I... Hey, so Joanne, this, or Jolene, this is Harriet. Yeah. All right. Um, question. So when you say the same foods, do you mean like um, the same recipe or are you talking like you know, the, the base of it, like the meat of it, or, I mean, how, how do you mean that? So my understanding is that it would be the same, the same meat. Um, so if you ate beef every day, which I have been known to do, um, that that's what is going to cause that to happen. Okay. And does that stall the, like, um, does it stall anything like, I guess, weight loss or the, you know, I'm new to this whole thing, so I don't know all the things, but, like, what does it do when you, when that resistance, resistance builds up? It can. Um, so it can, it can do numerous things. It can cause you to stall in your weight loss. Um, it can cause you to um, maybe have a little bit of weight gain. Um, and it can also, it can also prevent you from getting into the optimal, which is what ketogenic is all about, right? So we try to... Um, become the optimal health and eliminate most of the um, or as many of the inflammatories as we can um, and and having this uh, it's your it's it has to do with your gut health and when that's not at its optimal then that causes other things um, so and weight and weight stalls can be one of them yes so anyway, so I'm I'm going to attempt the food portion of it. Um, I'm going to look at the uh, food allergy testing because it would not shock me if I had those. Um, although I don't really feel bad, um, I don't know that I have the inflammatories. But um, we have talked about my weight uh, loss in since I've started this, and that it's only been about 20 pounds since November. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm good with it. I, I don't stress out about that. But if it is being caused by um, other things, then I would like to know that. So I'm going to go down that route and, and figure out uh, what we can do about it. So we did bring um, Javier in here so that we could kind of talk to him um, about the different things that he has tried so far. 
Um, and I know that you've gone out to our website and taken some, um, but then you've also gone out to Pinterest, correct? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So do you want to talk about some of the things that you've tried so far? Um, yep. Okay. So one of the first things uh, I did was try to incorporate more vegetables into not only my own, my diet, but the rest of my family's as well. Um, my my kids are good about eating vegetables, but my wife and I were less good about it. <laughs> we were trying to raise healthy kids, uh, but it was one of those we were needed to lead by example, and they didn't see us eating the broccoli, didn't they see us, so they started to not want to eat it also. Um, so the first the first vegetable that I kind of ventured out on was asparagus, um, and that was and then hearing some of what John was saying about asparagus and everything kind of sparked that more in me. Uh, but all I did with that was I would put it in a Ziploc bag, I put salt and pepper and some Parmesan cheese, and then put some olive oil to kind of shake it all up so it would all stick, and then I would bake that in the oven for 15 minutes or something just to get the asparagus tender, and that was a phenomenal hit in my family, and nice. we eat that at least once or twice a month now with, as a side to one of our meat dishes, whatever the meat may be, so. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, everything. Bacon, bacon, yeah. I was gonna say bacon makes everything better. Uh, so, so that was a big one. So, asparagus was one that uh, that I introduced, and that now we seek out. So, we go when wherever we go to a grocery store, a bundle of asparagus is one of the things we buy as part of our uh, shopping list. Um, another thing was meat, uh, or was chicken specifically. So, my kids don't like eating a lot of meat. Uh, but on occasion they'll tolerate it and uh, so what I started doing uh, trying to give it more flavor trying to do different things with it I've tried stuffing it with things I've started doing a whole bunch of different things but the one that I had the most success with was uh, I was telling jo uh, Jolene about this was I would take almond flour coconut flour and then again Parmesan cheese salt pepper some paprika some things just to kind of make it taste like something <clears throat> And then I would dip the egg, the chicken in egg and then coat it with the with that mixture to make it kind of a breading for the chicken. I throw it on the frying pan, two minutes on each side just to brown it, and then I throw it in the oven to cook it the rest of the way. And I got that tip from one of the Facebook things that I follow. Um, and again, I started getting a lot of success. At first it was pretty bland because I don't know the mixtures, the, you know, the proportions and whatnot. Uh, but uh, as I've perfected my recipe, I've been getting a lot more success with it. So that's kind of how I do it now. We used to do a lot of shake and bake chicken. Now it's shifted over to this. So I'm switching that. It's still, you know, the one go-to thing that we can go to very easy, just throw it together and throw it in the oven. Um, and then the side of asparagus or side of, they eat potatoes still. So I'm just trying to figure that one out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so those are the two big ones. Um, dessert wise, I've tried some of the chocolate things that <laughs> Jolene has said, so those have been helping me out. I haven't tested anything with my kids, uh, but I have tried a couple of those. And then the most recent one was uh, making my zucchini into spaghetti. Did you do it? Good. I did it last night, and it it was a lot. I was kind of skeptical, but it was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. And I, I, I didn't do anything fancy with it because last night, uh, Tuesday nights are a busy night for our house, so. I literally just spaghetti it up, threw it in a frying pan with some olive oil and sauteed it a bit, put some garlic powder on it and then salt and pepper to taste and I just ate it that way. And it Wow. Yeah, one zucchini made like a humongous bowl of spaghetti yeah. too. So I was <laughs> it was a very satisfying meal. Now I would add meat to it and everything. I just didn't have time to do that last night. So Did yeah. you eat zucchini before? Yes. So, but typically how I've done it before is I'd cut it into chunks and then saute it the same way, but then I'd miss out when my kids are eating spaghetti and whatnot. So, but I, I mean, it was pretty darn convincing. So yeah. I'm going well, to try that. And I had, and I had told Javier about it because my husband, I have mentioned numerous times again, <laughs> he does not like vegetables. So I told him that I was going to make spaghetti with zucchini. <laughs> Um, and he was not happy. In fact, he was actually really mad and most of the day was very angry at me because he knew that's what we were having for dinner that night and he did not want it. Um, funny part of that, however, is that he loved it and actually requested it a couple of times since then. So, um, 
he the zucchini unlike cauliflower but zucchini has such a mild flavor that it will take on anything that you put on it yeah. so um i found that with spaghetti if if you put it in the spaghetti sauce and you let it simmer for a little bit it's actually going to absorb absorb that flavor so um, one of the tips that i had given javier was depending on how you like your spaghetti noodle pre-keto spaghetti noodle <laughs> Um, if you want it al dente, I would say don't cook your, um, or don't steam your zucchini first. Throw it in raw and let it absorb your spaghetti sauce that way, and then you're going to get that little bit of a cr crunch with it. But if you were somebody who cooked your noodles all the way through and that they were soft, um, I would steam the zucchini first, make sure that you get all of the water out of it and then incorporate it into your sauce. So you're gonna get that same texture um, with it. How are you making the noodles? Huh? So is it a specific type of spaghetti sauce? Um, do you make your own? Is there, um, do you use something out of a jar? I mean, I'm pretty sure that's probably not the go-to, but <laughs> just there. Well, uh, you have to be very careful uh, with jar spaghetti. Um, that is one thing I have not ventured out and done of my own yet. Uh, I, I say yet because I swore I'd never make my own mayonnaise and I do that today. So it may be in the horizon that I do a spaghetti sauce, but um, I have found a spaghetti sauce at Aldi's that is um, organic and there's a there's a small amount of sugar. I think it's the la the last ingredient, or maybe the second to the last. Uh, so the sugar content is very low. Um, the carbohydrates is fairly low as well. Um, so, but there are some others. Um, I know there. I can't remember how you pronounce it, but I think the brand is R A O. It's fairly expensive. Um, I was not a big fan of it but it is, uh, it is keto friendly. There is a pizza sauce that I have used in place of <coughs> uh, spaghetti sauce. I get that at the Dollar Tree. Um, it does have a pizza sauce flavor, so you have to add some spices to kind of make it more spaghetti flavor. Um, but, but that one is actually all keto friendly. Um, but I'll link I'll put a couple of the names of things that I use in the show notes, um, just so you guys have it. But I was gonna try. I saw the on the Facebook page. There's uh, the Alfredo chicken Alfredo. Mm. I was gonna try that with that. Put yeah. the noodles in the Alfredo and put oh, everything I've together. Oh, I've never tried that. I should try that. Yeah. <laughs> um, How are you making your noodles? So when I, I did it last night, I literally just threw it in a saute pan with some olive oil and just sauteed them until they were, they felt. No, no, no. How am I? Zucchini is a big round oh, piece. So she, you, you make noodles <laughs> yeah. out of that. How she, do you make the noodles? She has a way fancier way, but she lent me her little manual spiralizer. I don't know where she got it from, but it literally. Noodle. Like, a, a noodleizer or whatever, but I literally cranked the zucchini through it and it slices okay. it up for me so yeah, i'm not so, sure where she got it though yeah i don't i don't remember and i purchased it was cheap um i you purchased can get them it. off amazon and walmart yeah yeah the one that i let javier use i bought at first because i wasn't sure again the husband hates it so <laughs> i didn't want to invest a bunch of money um but because he did end up liking it and it was not that fun to sit and crank <laughs> Um, I did buy a big one, and it's called a um, Is that the Vegetti. 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 Yeah, Vegetti. Thank you. Um, and and you just hook the zucchini onto it, and there's a crank handle, and it feeds it out into. It, it's super quick and easy. It feeds it out into a bowl. Um, but like I told Javier, I would suggest that you start out with something cheap to make certain that that's what you want because the Vegettis are not that expen inexpensive. Um, and if you're not ever going to use it again, I mean, it'd be a big waste of money. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I. If you just want to try it, um, uh, Kroger puts them in already, like yeah. done, like in noodle form in their produce section from yeah. time to time. Hy V's got it too. I've seen it. Interesting. I've never seen that. And have you guys looked at the ingredients to make no, sure I, that there's I didn't. nothing? I just noticed okay. that that oh, they make okay. noodles here out of the zucchini. Or I'll have pre, to check pre, it. Pre, 
Yeah, <laughs> I'll have to check into that. Yeah. Um, the only thing that I do caution on that is some of those things that are packaged um, for convenience have other things added to it. So I know some of the, um, not all of, but some of the cauliflower, the rice cauliflower, have ingredients in it that's um, I think this not is very in the good. organic section. I, okay. mean, I think that's where I've seen it. So. Okay. Yeah, it's just what they take out of a, probably like a, maybe they cut up themselves. It's like, just has the, it's not like in a bag, it's like a, has a clear plastic wrap over it where they weighed it. Oh, and so like it put came from the deli? Yeah. Okay. The ones I've seen were, were packaged. Okay. okay. It came from some processing. Hmm, okay. And I didn't know quite what to expect, expect but I was very... Uh, well, pleasantly surprised that I mean they were really noodle like they were yeah. long strips of noodles so you were able to like suck it up like spaghetti I mean it was really really good so yeah. I'm definitely going to do it I don't, I've never liked zucchini but then the, the only way I've really had it is either in zucchini bread or my mom would just boil it <laughs> yeah it's and again I mean it, Zucchini will take on whatever flavor. So yeah. if it if That's spaghetti good. is something that you're missing, yeah. that is that is an alternative um, that I would suggest. Now there are things like um, the uh, spaghetti squash, but that has a stronger flavor. Yeah. So that's not the same. Yeah, yeah. it's it's. Um, I've grown spaghetti squash and used it. It's not. Yeah, I mean you definitely have to like spaghetti squash <laughs> to eat that as an alternative. Yeah. Uh, where zucchini, I just. I feel like you're not getting the flavor of the zucchini yeah. in it. Um, Spaghetti squash is like squash. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I yeah, was I've not a fan. I've done it too, and I wasn't a fan. I've tried multiple times. Maybe I did it wrong. As, yeah. <laughs> I, it's, 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 it's a definite, distinct flavor, much like cauliflower, which brings us <laughs> into the next thing. Javier and I had talked about. Um, so cauliflower you can do numerous things with and I think the last show I made mention that I was trying to make um, macaroni and cheese out of cauliflower <laughs> yeah. and numerous people say that it tastes like macaroni and cheese but I gotta tell you I do not know what macaroni and cheese they ate <laughs> because it tastes like cauliflower with cheese on it which I'm not a fan I thought it was disgusting. My husband loved it. Who proclaims that he hates cauliflower? I'll just tell you that. Um, but yeah, I'm not a fan. And uh, so there are other things you can use it for as well, like pizza crust. Again, I'm not a big fan. Um, I have found other alternatives for pizza crust that I like a lot better. Um, but one of the things I was telling Javier about was the uh, grilled cheese. Um, my husband loves those. You ha there's some tips on it that you have to um, you have to make certain that you get all of the water out of it before you try to make it. Um, so what I have done is I generally buy them in the bag, um, and you can get them at Costco or Walmart or whatever. Um, but if it's not a steamable bag, I just poke holes in the bag, throw it in the microwave within that bag, and you create my own steam bag yeah. um, and then I put it in cheesecloth and I squeeze it and squeeze it and squeeze it until you cannot get any more water out of it and then when I form it in the pan I form it into like a sandwich shape or a bread shape brown it on one side turn it over put the cheese on it and then let the cheese melt as the other side is browning um, and my husband and my mother loved them Again, unless for that one, you have to put a lot of spice in. Um, I put a lot of oregano um, and I don't know, basil, I think. Um, it was more of an Italian flavor. Um, I was able to eat it, but I still was not a lover. Um, I just think cauliflower and I are, we're not friends. And I don't, I don't think we're ever going to build a friendship. <laughs> So, so um, but have you tried that one yet? I haven't tried the grilled cheese. Uh, I haven't, uh, I just haven't tried that one. But what I did do was about two weeks ago, uh, we were doing fried rice. So I made fried rice for my, the rest of my family, the normal way with rice. But then what I ended up doing was I saved 
some of the carrots and peas out, some of the chicken out, some of the onion out and everything. And I prepared the cauliflower like fried rice. I looked at the back of the fried rice seasoning pack. So it was salt, pepper, garlic, paprika, some other things that I tried to imitate. And I put that all on the cauliflower as I was sauteing it in, in, in like a pan, kind of, again, to simulate stir fry. Um, put some olive oil in there and everything, let that season up a bit. And then I threw all the rest of the ingredients on top of it, mixed it all together. And it was a pretty darn convincing fried rice. So I was, I made myself a bowl or two of it that way. And then they ate the rest of the fried rice the normal way with real rice. But I think I'm going to try and do that next time and see. I'm sure they'll know it's just a difference, but they each tasted mine and they were, they're like, oh, that's good. So. And did you have the cauliflower flavor at all with that? I I don't have an issue with cauliflower, <laughs> so it tasted. I do. It tasted. I mean, to me, uh, it had the same feel as like rice, because mm-hmm. rice is kind of grainy, and and that's the same feel I had from the cauliflower. And then with all the <clears> other <throat> stuff I added to it, and the meat and the peas and everything, kind of just drowned it all out. So I didn't okay. taste cauliflower, and my kids didn't specifically say, "Ooh, that tastes different" or "That tastes weird." They ate it. They said, "Ooh, that's good," and. So I was going to try it next time when I do fried rice was to just use like a whole bag of the cauliflower rice and use that as the base. Yeah. I'll have to try that one. Um, Again, I mean, (laughs) my husband will eat all of it. So if I don't like it, (laughs) I guess I can, I'll freeze it. That's that's what I got to keep reminding myself. I'll freeze it for the next week. Yep. (laughs) Um, So you, you talked to me and told me that you made something else with cauliflower though. So oh, yeah. the, what was it, twice? It was like twice a twice baked baked potato type thing. So okay. that one, I didn't put it in the oven because that's, uh, that's how I think John said he did it. But again, I go back to my pan and my olive oil. I started with that to heat up the cauliflower to bring it up to temperature. But then I added bacon, butter, sour cream, cheese, and mixed it all together. And it became, it looked like mashed potatoes at the end because it was all clumpy mm-hmm. together. And again, put it in a bowl and I started eating it. And because of, I mean, it had good bacon flavor and everything. My kids loved it. My wife ate it. And she's like, that's pretty convincing. So, and she's one also, she says she likes broccoli and cauliflower. But again, I have to do all this stuff to it for her to eat it. So now I'm like, okay, I could do some more keto friendly things versus, you know, just globbing and a whole bunch of other stuff. Although putting butter on it and cheese on it isn't a bad thing either now. Right. But yeah, I, absolutely. I've learned now. Before and, I thought, oh, I don't want to do all that and ruin the broccoli, but now yeah. it's like, well. And that actually is how I have found getting my husband to eat some of the vegetables that he doesn't like, which I'm starting to question whether he really doesn't like vegetables or not. Um, but like last night for dinner, I made um, salmon and broccoli. And then I made a cheese sauce that I poured over top of all of it. Um, and, and mostly it's because the broccoli doesn't have enough fat. Mm-hmm. So that's how I just put that. Yeah, the that's how fat I convinced myself it. too. It didn't have enough fat. That's why. <laughs> it <doesn't have> enough <laughs> fat? Yeah. yeah. Well, well, yeah. It, it shouldn't have, have, have any. It shouldn't have any. Yeah, have any. Has no fat, so you have to add it. Um, and, and quite honestly, neither does the salmon. Yeah. I mean, you're not getting. I mean, you're getting some from salmon, yeah. but some it's not. Oil. Yeah, it's not a high enough um, for me. So I made the cheese sauce and um, really did it on the fly. I do have a cheese sauce recipe that I didn't want to pull out and do all that stuff. So I just did a quick um, melting of cheese and yeah. adding some other stuff in it, but. Um, yeah, so with the fried chicken, I want to touch base on that again because that's one of them that I have not tried. I did try to do, um, I have done fish and I've done chicken both um, in oil with just almond flour. Mm-hmm. Um, I have not combined it with the coconut flour. That's, a, that's actually a really good tip and I should have thought of that myself because the coconut flour is going to absorb your um, your oil a little bit, where your almond flour is going to give you that texture of like a cornmeal. That's and that's why. So I made biscuits out of almond flour once, and it was just so grainy and gritty. I was like, well, I don't want to do. And that's why I, I said I like the ta- I like the flavor of coconut. So I was like, well, let me put some of this in there, so it's not so. Because I thought if I would just use almond flour, it would have been like you know yeah. really gritty tasting. So. 
So I didn't know. I just did it so I didn't use as much almond <laughs> flour. <laughs> yeah, it's well, and I mean, again, that actually is a, is a really good um, combination to use. So I am going to try that one. Um, but the thing that you did that is really interesting to me is that you browned it and then you put it in the oven. Yeah. I have attempted to fry many of these things in the oil, and I don't know if I don't have my oil up to temperature before I put it in, but my <coughs> breading falls off, and um, so I've just kind of put that to the wayside <laughs> because it's, I, I couldn't perfect it, and um, so I'm gonna attempt, I'm gonna try that. So, just, so I double dip hot. it just so you know. So I dip it in the egg, I bread it, then I dip it back in the egg, and I rebread it, then I fry it. Okay. To make sure, you know, it's really covered <laughs> and okay. really coated. So it's kinda like you're kinda like searing it. Yeah, that's I mean, yeah, that's what, what I'm doing. doing well because what I what's like happened you would to sear be, something if if you do this, I don't do it, but if you sear things before you put it in a crock pot yeah. or even if you were gonna put it in for mm -hmm. uh, three or four hours in a in a pot or something. So when I first made this recipe I didn't do that and yeah. my chicken was more burnt because I had to cook it all the way through in the oil so I just yep. it just burned everything and it just didn't taste good yep. so like I said going through Facebook I saw this tip of just brown it and then throw it in the oven I was like well let me try that and yep. I've had a lot of success with that yeah so when you're I'm using it, olive oil I'm assuming for frying I was using coconut I, had I like used a coconut, coconut, coconut as well okay yeah um, and when I did the fish the last time I ended up having to get rid of my oil and put new in before I was done because of that thing. So. <laughs> yeah, there were so much droppings yeah. off of the, you know, the breading had dropped off that it was burning yep. and then I was getting that yep. funky flavor with it. So that is, that's a really good tri tip. I'm going to, I'm going to use that. So <laughs> stay tuned for updates on how I, how I dealt with that. But. So I've done it with chicken. I've done it with zucchini. Like I cut the zucchini really thin. I do the same thing, bread it, fry it and bake it in the oven. And, nice. Yeah. And the cauliflower, or the, the twice baked, yeah. I'm wondering if if I did that and I used bacon grease to start it instead of olive oil. Because yeah. olive oil is pretty mild flavor. Because yeah. um, I have been able to do like a mashed potato with cauliflower mm -hmm. if I put sour cream and chives and some really strong flavor in yeah. it. Yeah. I'm able to eat that fine. So I'm wondering if that twice bake, if I could do that with the bacon grease yeah. to really get that flavor in there. Cook the bacon first and then throw it in yeah. there to get it all up, yeah. Yeah, somehow I have to figure out how to <laughs> be able to eat cauliflower. <laughs> uh, Blindful. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, it's, it's, the, I, it's the taste, the smell and the taste. I can't, I just can't get over I, I don't like it. <laughs> no matter how much I try, it still tastes like cauliflower. Um, so, do any anybody on the phone or anybody in the room? Do you guys have any questions about food, um, how you prep it, or would like some pointers and tips on how to prep food? No, really? I've been I've been making meals one day a week for ten years, so that's really nothing new to me. Well, not, not keto. Yeah, that's what I meant, but, like, specific but, yeah. to I, how to uh, do I actually something. have questions. Sure, go ahead. Um, what do you drink besides water? <laughs> so me personally, I drink water. Um, I put lemon in my water. Um, if I want something different, I'll put lemon in the water. Um, there are some... Um, diet sodas on the market that are made with stevia uh you can find them at um Am on amazon they have several different brands that are made with stevia there's one called zevia that you can find at kroger um i have tried them the root beer is okay uh the cream soda was okay the others were fine but they did not to me they did not taste what like they were what they were supposed to be simulating yeah. so there's one that's like a mountain dew there's one similar to a dr pepper i did not think they tasted like those things um not that they were terrible but it wasn't something that i probably would go to but i'm not a big soda drinker um does anyone i'm not either i was thinking more of like juice 
Uh, yeah, there would be no juice that would qualify as keto friendly. I found some, I don't know if it's necessarily keto friendly, but there's drink mixes that do use stevia and it's low carb, like three grams for 16 ounce. It's true citrus. They have true lime and they've got a bunch of other different flavors. What was the name of it again? Uh, well, it's overall, it's true citrus, but then they have, they have different flavors. So there's lemonade, there's watermelon, there's uh, black cherry, uh, lemonade, limeade. Um, Walmart's got it and, and uh, just about everybody carries it. But I like to usually stuff, those are by glass. They also make picture packets, but not many people carry those, so I get that online. Yeah, I, I would just, um, again, check the label, see what the ingredients are. Um, okay. Just because it's low carb doesn't necessarily mean it's okay, uh, because the you know ingredients do matter. So I would just say check those uh, before you purchase, because don't be like me and purchase something even a year into this. And I preach this to people all the time. I still have been known uh, to do that. So I just bought so some, I, something from Costco. So when that I look had at the label, oil. what am I looking for? I'm sorry. So. Well, you want to make certain that there's no um, there's no sweetener in it that they hide. So you can go out on our website. There's um, a list of the different sweeteners, but the most popular one that they put in um, are dextrose or malodextrin. Um, also, ACE K, which is not always the name they put on the label. Um, it's A C E with a I don't know. It's a really long word. And then potassium. Um, so if you see a word that's probably 10 letters long that begins with ACE and then says potassium after it, that's probably what it is. Um, those are things that I would steer clear from. Do they the, capture those in the sugars? No. Category on your... No. Okay. Nope. Um, if they have multiple sweeteners, they don't have to make all of them visible in the numbers on the actual label, but you will see them in the ingredients. The ingredients. Um, okay. So that's the first thing I look at in general um, is the ingredients and then I'll look at the carb count um, because ingredients for me are way more important than the carbs. Um, so yeah, I mean, there on our website, uh, Harriet, there are a list of all of those uh, that you can you could even print out and have with you um but if there's i mean if you're ever ever in question just buzz me and ask me i'll i'll tell you you could take a picture of it send it to us um you guys i mean again you can always reach us at ketonian corner at gmail.com send me a picture of a label if you question what it is i'd be more than happy to help you out um but the the store-bought things are, you really, really have to watch because there are a lot of hidden things in those labels, so. <clears throat> okay, and the other thing I had about, I, want, I wanted to ask about uh, was fruit. Are there any fruits that are okay to eat? Um, I would oh. say in the very beginning, I would recommend against them. Uh, okay. You want to be able to get yourself um, to a state where your body is really using the fat for fuel. Um, after that, you could use uh, start eating berries. Um, so strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries. Um, but I would eat them in a very small quantity and I would eat them only occasionally. Once you hit your goal of where you want to be health-wise, whether that's your weight or whether it is reversing um, a condition, once you get to that point, um, you could probably increase that a little bit, but I would most definitely be very conservative up to that point. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Yep. Does anybody have any other questions? We got about a minute left, but... Are you going to put your stuff out on the website that you talked about today? I can. I wasn't thinking about it, but I could, yeah. I can work with children. You talked about can... chocolate. 
I don't know if that's out there or not, is it? I think it's on the Facebook. Yeah, so um, there, I, I have some chocolate out on the Pinterest page. Um, and I do believe that there is some on our website. I'd have to check, but I'll put it a, in the show I think notes where they're chocolate, at. there's chocolate in a cup, cake in a cup or something like that. There, yeah, there is a mug cake. that's the only cake. thing that's there Yeah, on there's the a website. chocolate mug, mug cake. Um, yeah, I can, I can make sure I tell you where it is uh, in the show notes. When you say website, you did say Facebook or the, I have been gone for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we, we have, um, we're on almost all social media. So we are at ketoniancorner.com, ketoniancorner at gmail.com. We have a Facebook group, um, which you're in love because everything is Ketonian Corner. Um, we also have Pinterest, we have Twitter, we have YouTube. We have SoundCloud as well. Um, I might be missing one, but uh, I think I hit them all. But you guys can, you know, like I said, if you ever have any questions, you can hit us up um, on our email account. And um, I generally am the one who is answering that because <laughs> John doesn't do social media too much. Um, but I do try to get those answered within 24 hours. So. Hopefully you're not standing at the grocery store wanting me to answer right away, but um, I mean, they do come through on my phone, so I may answer it right away, but this depends on where I'm at and what I'm doing, so. I don't think I still get the Facebook. I used to get it Okay. We can, we can hook you up and, and get that on there. So, okay, well, we're at time now, so thank you everyone for joining us uh, for another episode.